Hi. Welcome to the world premiere of Elena. Um, we have a few people who are still coming through the traffic and weathering the weather, um, braving the weather. So we will keep that door open for as long as we can. And then we are going to hit the ground running. Um, so our director is one of those people. So I'll give him a shout out afterwards. <laughs> um, but uh, I know he's not here and we have people who are gonna watch online. So I just, I do want to thank our cinematographer, Dylan Kitts. Dylan, he worked for pennies compared to what he could have gotten elsewhere. But because of people's hearts for the subject matter, for sex trafficking, awareness, people who worked on this film, and I just talked to someone out in the lobby about this, people who worked on this film, the hearts of every single person were in the right place. And we had servant leaders working with me on this film. A lot of you guys wouldn't accept payment. I'm just gonna say, like, it was hard to pay some of y'all. I had to force y'all to take payment. And <clears throat> I just cannot be more grateful for, um, and Griffin will see this later, I guess. I can't, I'm, I'm, I can't be more grateful for Griffin because he, and a lot of people don't know this, um, he did a lot of producing work, and he helped me keep my head above water. So thank you. A lot, of, um, a lot of you guys, some of you have produced in here, and you know that you have to put out fires and do it in a way where no one knew that a fire was ablaze. And you guys, all of you, especially Zoe Taylor and Jasmine Herbert, both of those people, um, Zoe Taylor did amazing prop design, um, set, set design, and she, once I met her, I could just give all of that to her and not even worry about it. Um, and you made producing easy, all of you, especially the, the cast, and I do wanna have a, give a huge shout out to Wisdom, our lead. There was, I, I'm, I'm just gonna, we're gonna get vulnerable tonight, guys. This is a safe space. Um, I know a lot of you, and thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you so much for the support and the honor of being in my life and our crew's life and our cast life. And a word about wisdom, our lead. Wisdom not only did these scenes that are extremely hard and emotional, but she kept her heart open in between scenes. And we had, we had one of our actresses drop out the day of, the hour of, and she, carrying this film on her back, she got us a replacement. Well, she helped us get a replacement by finding us a replacement within the hour. So shout out to Wisdom. Incredible job for helping me with all of that. Um, yeah, I'm just so, I'm so blessed and honored to have worked with all of you. Um, and a lot of you guys aren't even in this room. So for those of you watching online, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I thought... I thought, if not now, when? Because a lot of you guys asked me, how did I get these stories? This film is based on um, seven. I know I said five, but technically the feature film was based on seven true stories of women who escaped human trafficking, who survived human trafficking. Um, and I thought, you know, this is a safe space, and I'm just going to be open and vulnerable with how I got these stories and why this all happened. Um, our cast and crew have been waiting three years for this to premiere. Three. Three years. Um, I have been working on the script since, this particular script, since 2019. So let me backtrack because the, the inspiration and the, the inception of this, this film was actually in 2015, y'all. In 2015, 
Um, I experience suffering. And all of us in this room have experienced some sort of suffering, but I know each and every one of you have experienced sexual brokenness. And a lot of you guys know that I'm a Christ follower. And what that means is that a lot of prayer went into this film and into the inception of it. So in 2015, I had a breakup. My heart was, you know, oh, so sad. But the reason I bring that up is because that person was addicted to pornography. And I experienced sexual abuse from that person. And um, I asked God, because I heard a saying said at that time around me, your greatest pain can become your greatest ministry. So minister to foster, to care for, to serve, to minister to. I, I fell to my knees and I asked God, how can I take this suffering and help others with it? What can I do with the suffering that will help, right? So I just heard, see how I see these women in these films. And I was like, okay, interesting. So I started researching. First of all, I researched, is pornography even addictive? What does dopamine do for the body? Um, what are the effects of dopamine with masturbation, with sex? And um, I found out a lot of things. One of those interesting uh, statistics was that one in seven pornography films at the time were trafficked individuals. And I just kind of felt like, okay, let me dig into the stories of these women. Because at the time, studying acting, doing film, you learn about people. You find empathy for people that you normally couldn't relate to. And you know what I could relate to was the sexual brokenness that they had experienced. So I wrote a stage play. I, and to this day, it's the weirdest thing. People will come up to me and just talk to me about their suffering and specifically porn addiction. It's really weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's strange. Um, but I started talking to porn addicts. I started talking to ex-porn stars. And no, a lot of you were like asking me, have asked me in the past. No, I didn't watch porn to make the stage play. I did not have to. It was a stage play about what happens behind the scenes. How are these women carrying and using or trying to heal from their sexual brokenness? And these porn addicts as well. Um, so I interviewed a lot of people. And I just gathered data. I gathered statistics. And I found that statistic. And then because of that, I started finding a lot of trafficking stories. But I couldn't use them for that stage play because they weren't about really pornography. They were more about trafficking. But I learned so much. And I gathered these trafficking stories. And then I just, once we did that stage play, I didn't know what else to do with it. Like, where, what am I going to do with these stories? But I treasured them in my heart because my compassion for these women grew. And um, that compassion, I knew other people could feel it too if I told these stories, because stories matter. Stories are powerful. Specifically, how we deal with suffering is powerful. So um, in 2019, I heard God saying to me, put these stories somewhere so you don't forget them. So I was like, oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. I've had the honor the privilege of hearing some women in person say these lines from this film. And I knew they, their stories had to be told. Um, so I wrote them down in a script. Originally, this was a feature film. I boiled it down into a short film. I thought it flowed really well that way. And then I just sat on it again. In 2021, my dad passed away. And that's the point where I was really complacent at the time. I was comfortable, I was living my life. I was like, I don't know, whatever. But I fell to my knees when my dad passed away. I just felt like 
everything had been taken away from me. My security had been taken away from me. And I asked God, what do you want me to do with this suffering again? How can I make this suffering into something good? And he told me, face your fears. And I was like, okay, what fear? Hello? And the most terrifying answer, make this script into a film. And I was like, God, do you know how much that would cost? Do you know that? And he was like, yes, but if it's my will, I'll make a way. So I was like, well, OK, then. <laughs> All right, if you can help us make this film, I'll give you the glory. So I mean, come on, like, this is, this is because of God's like, provision. And let me go into detail about that. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, uh, we had investors come on board. So I, I got the cast and crew together. And again, Griffin, I wish Griffin was here right now. I'll have to show him this video. But um, he'll watch online later. Uh, Griffin. We worked together on a film in 2020. Um, I acted in a film of his, and I knew his, he had a humble heart. And I knew he could guide the women through with empathy and hum humility on set to go through these hard scenes, especially our young actress. Um, and I was like, will you do this? He said yes. Um, so he helped me get a lot of people together. A lot of you in this room were brought in by Griffin. I mean, he was my right-hand man. Like, he did just incredible, incredible job. Um, and then we had investors that came on board um, who said, OK, if you make a nonprofit, we want tax deductible, deductible and we're going we're gonna to give you the, the budget. So um, I was like, OK, cool. We made a nonprofit. Um, we did a lot of cool things with that nonprofit. We actually worked with the girls for one of the, um, one of the nonprofits we, we worked with. And, and uh, we did this film with Wellspring Living in Atlanta. Um, was one of our biggest supporters. They have a trauma care center, and that is a one-stop shop for women to, and, and men, and young boys, <laughs> girls and women and young boys, and just people who've been exploited, people who have been abused. Trauma, trauma care. They have a trauma care center where they have a one-stop shop to um, be examined by anyone who needs to be involved in an investigation, they are world leading because in every single other place, really in the world, people have to be re-traumatized and examined over and over and over again, but not at Wellspring. They have a trauma care center. They get checked out once, a bodily examination, and they're out and they don't have to do it again and get re-traumatized. Amazing work. And is there anyone from Wellspring living here tonight? Okay, they're watching online. So um, huge thank you to Wellspring Living. Um, thank you so much. And we also want to thank uh, Remember New. They prevent sex trafficking in other countries and areas of the world where they're the highest risk population um, of, of children. And they prevent sex trafficking from happening, which is the best, one of the best ways to deal with this and keep it from happening and stop the spread. Um, they do amazing work. And that's on your form. If you, if you need one, there's more in the back. Um, but yeah, so we made a nonprofit, and we actually did um, some acting classes with the girls at Wellspring. Our leads <laughs> took tours of the trauma center and the rehabilitation center. Um, and we, uh, we even got our leads to have a, a real interview with a sex trafficked sur survivor, sex trafficking survi survivor. Um, incredible what that organization does. but. Um, so that's what our nonprofit did. And then the week before filming, they backed out. And we were 80% in the hole. And uh, I was just like, God, you said you provide a way. If this is your will, you're going to make it happen. Griffin calls me. He's like, hey, I have people with plane tickets ready to, ready to go. Like, I need to know if this film is happening or not. And I was like, Griffin, just have faith. It'll be fine. Hung up the call. I had a little bit of doubt. I'm not going to lie. But I was like, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. The day, the night before I was going to call it, our executive producer called me on the phone, hadn't talked to him in years. And he said, Brooke, is this film going to make a difference? And I said, yes. And he provided every single penny that we needed. So thank you, Henry McDonald. <laughs> Probably didn't want me to say his name, but 
you guys know who he is. It's, his name is up there. Um, I'm saying, Henry. Uh, everyone knows who you are now. Um, but he couldn't be here tonight, but I, I just, come on, like, you're, you're awesome, Henry. Um, so it's been a crazy journey, but here's the thing. We believe stories are powerful. Stories rooted in truth, whether they happened or um, whether they're rooted in a, in a universal truth, like how we approach suffering. Whether you're bitter, you become jaded, or whether you use that suffering to help others, that's what defines us. And that's the heart of the story here tonight. A great quote is, if you run from suffering, it'll follow you. But the suffering that you face transforms you. And healing is possible. Sexual brokenness, it is possible to heal. And we are going to show this film in schools, um, maybe after program, after school programs. But God's going to use this film. Obviously, the gritty parts will be taken out for kids. But um, we're going to make more projects. We have scripts ready to go. Um, our next film, every single media project we do is going to advocate for um, something. So we have a feature film script uh, advocating for Asian immigrants. We have a stage play ready to go that is advocating for homeless veterans, veterans, um, homeless veterans and cancer survivors. So we have things ready. And we believe stories can change lives, guys. Stories are powerful and they can change lives. And it all comes from suffering. So how we face suffering, these women and our cast, honestly, our cast too, they faced those feelings. They faced that. So um, I just want to encourage you guys tonight to um, spread the word. We're going to have this on YouTube on Butterworth Media, at Butterworth Media on YouTube. Please share it. Please like it. Please send it to people who work in schools. Please send it to people who have a voice in this, in, in sex trafficking awareness. But we believe this film can change lives because it's all about how we find healing and through suffering. What do you do after the trauma, right? So um, we will have a Q&A after this. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy. We will have a behind the scenes film um, of how we made it, a little bit more information, and then we'll have the actual film. So thank you. <laughs>